And now, Diecast Discoveries on the Diecast Media Network. All right, hey there, folks. Chuck here, and I've got a bit of a mixed bag today, literally, of some stuff I got from Ocala. Uh, we're gearing up for the big uh, show in Atlanta, so I promised myself not to buy anything fancy before the show because I know there's going to be a lot of good deals there. So I was down in Ocala visiting my family and had a few minutes and thought I'd go through the dollar cars, and I did treat myself to one $5 car, and we'll get to that one in a little bit. But uh, real quick, thank you for uh, subscribing and uh, following this channel as we're trying to grow to 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year and use that to parlay the exposure into 24,000 cars donated through DrivenDreams.org for charity in 2024. So, uh, while you're thinking about it, punch that subscribe button and uh, tell your friends if you like what you see here. Uh, we got a real mixed bag of stuff here, and David and Mark are adding a lot of great stuff. Uh, real quick out of the gate, this one's really interesting. This is a Racing Champions that I had not seen before, a real wild casting. Uh, but it is uh, rubber tires, and it's got a liftable thing and uh, engine underneath it. I thought this was pretty cool. These are all cars that I'm going to use for customs. Uh, you know, they're pretty rough, most of them, or, you know, uh, cars that have good parts on them when I'm digging through. These were at uh, Vintage Toy King down in Ocala, by the way. They have a great dollar bin section, and almost all these cars came from there, except for the one that I'll show you later. Um, but this is a Johnny Lightning, I believe. Yes, Johnny Lightning. Uh, it's got the uh, racy wheels on it. It's got the hard ones. Uh, lifting hood. So for me, these cars, I picked them because they were either premiums that had uh, rubber tires that they could be used for or had movable pieces that I could take off and use them for dioramas or just good cars for like stacking in a junkyard diorama or something like that. These are more background cars. These are probably not going to be used for anything um, as a foreground car. I thought this was a cool Ertl uh, this is that Pontiac Bonneville. I've actually built this one before uh, for my video game build that was in uh, Diecast Heroes. But this would be, I believe this one was the one that they used for uh, the Smokey and the Bandit set. And uh, later was used, uh, I think, by Racing Champions for their movie set. This was a double packer, so these were actually 50 cents a piece. These are, as you might recognize, also Ertl Bonnevilles, but these are the Dukes of Hazard ones. Uh, they say Hazard County down below. And yeah, they're pretty rough. And these early ones had uh, paper decals on them. They did not have uh, actual tampos on them. Uh, but yeah, these are... I'm surprised at how easy these are to still find, even in this condition. Uh, but yeah, these are just really, <laughs> really beat up. Uh, so, but they make great... They got good uh, front grills and back areas, so they're good for like junkyard stacks and stuff. Uh, background details. Uh, this is a Hot Wheels Blackwall era Rolls Royce, and it is missing the grill. Oh, no, the grill is in there. Oh, look at that. It's just come off. So, there it is. Oh, this thing's actually complete. Look at that. And that was a dollar. These ones are actually, you know, starting to get a little tricky to find, and it's in surprisingly good shape. There's only a few flea bites on it. Uh, but you frequently see them missing this part, so I grabbed it because I've got one that was missing the top, and I didn't think the grill was on this one, so I was like, oh, I'll take the one that I've got that's got a grill and no top and put them together. Well, now I've got a complete one. Actually, that's a pretty nice find. Um, I think this is a Racing Champions. Uh, yeah, this is from the uh, bad old days of Racing Champions when they were pretty uh, rough on the details. This is a 63 Plymouth. It's got that filled in uh, A window, but this is a altered wheelbase Plymouth. It's got a crazy uh, engine on it. Uh, just, I don't know. I'm a sucker for mid 60s Plymouths, seeing as I own one. Uh, so I picked that one up because it was a buck. And I picked this one up because it's also a buck. And, you know, the plow is complete on it. This is actually a very nice condition uh, version of this uh, this Hot Wheels truck. So, um, I forget what it was called with the plow, but um, yeah, this will be a, a very obviously a later version of it, but it's still the metal metal with the complete roll bar. That's 
very frequently broken or the spotlights are broken off and the plow is frequently broken. So hard to pass that up seeing as I've got so many broken versions of that one. This one, I'm surprised I've come across this one before, but again, for a buck and it's a Tamika and it's got a little lifting rumble seat on it. That's full of filth. Yuck. Um, and it's a Packard Coupe Roadster, and it is 172 scale. So this would actually be a pretty big car, you know, because this, uh, well, this Johnny Lightning is 164th-ish. So, you know, it, it's longer than that, and it's still pretty significantly under scale. So that must have been a really big car in person. It's been a while since I've been around a Packard of that vintage. Going the other way, this is uh, significantly... Well, this one is about the same way. It's significantly smaller than 164 scale. This is a Johnny Lightning um, hard wheels. So this would be a good downhill car. I think this roof opens, or the hood opens. There we go. And it's got a little uh, white plastic. Uh, looks like a big block in there. Don't think that's a Hemi necessarily. But uh, Super B is a favorite car of mine. My first glued together car was a 70 Super B. I built with my dad. A lot of good memories building that. Um, this one's a little closer to actual 164 scale. This is another Johnny Lightning. This is a uh, Cuda. I think this is a 72? Nope, 70. Cuda. And, uh, you know, give it a good smack. And these are earlier Johnny Lightnings. Oh, just took some paint off there. That's okay. Uh, that one's got better V8 under it. It's got two colors to it, but that's a little plastic V8. I believe that's plastic uh, under the hood. Looks more like a, oh, looks like it could be a big block too. Right, uh, Johnny Lightning and you know the folks at Round Two have really come a long way at bringing that brand up into the 21st century, um, and uh, really excited with the stuff that they got coming out now. They're bringing out all sorts of crazy stuff. We just covered on Diecast Breakdown. There's a Ford Probe coming out. This is one of the uh, hijackers, I believe they were, that's what they were called, or hijackers, I think, high rakers, something like that uh, series. Uh, really cool thing that they did in the uh, late 70s, early 80s over at Hot Wheels where you could set the rake of your car at three different settings or you could pull it all the way out and break it and lose the back like many of us frequently did. So you got your three little steps there and uh, have it sitting up high or at sort of a stockish height that's just a casting that i really dig and uh you know, again it was a buck so um you know oh there's another uh plow that i uh picked up this is another one that's a early 80s black wall car that this would be a later 90s early 2000s version of it but it's still metal metal and it's in great condition you know the uh satellite dish is in good uh, kit. The <laughs> windows are very clear on this. It's one of the nicer conditioned versions of this that I've seen out of the package. Uh, so it's a fun sci-fi car with lots of parts on it. There's another Johnny Lightning Cuda. Uh, very similar to the other one. Again, hard plastic. And uh, it's another Racing Champions, I believe. Uh, panel truck. Nope, this is Johnny Lightning again. Uh, but it's got little uh, headers sticking out down there, a parachute, you got a nice hood scoop, nice steering wheel on the inside, a lot of good parts on this one. This one's almost too nice to chop up. It's, uh, you know, fairly intact. Uh, so, let's see. We got, I think this is Ertl here. Um, it's farm stuff, so it's most definitely Ertl, yep. Um, but it's like a hay baler or something. I don't know. Something I didn't have, and I'm a sucker for a cheap trailer. Speaking of, here's another one. Another Ertl. Um, some kind of uh, farming implement. This is plastic, metal base. Not rubber, but, you know, multi piece plastic wheels. Pretty nice. Another Johnny Lightning here, and uh, it's also got, uh, I didn't think it had the windshield in it, I just kind of grabbed these, um, but it's got the, the windshield, 
It's got a nice uh, V8 in there, nice separate grill, separate uh, glass. Uh, it's a Monopoly piece, so the raised white letters are Monopoly themed, but still rubber tires. Uh, a set of rubber tires for a dollar. And uh, I'll buy rubber tires for a buck all day. This is another Johnny Lightning. This looks like it would be one of the like maybe the street freaks or something. It says the toypeddler.com on there. Oh, that's interesting. So, um, name rings a bell, actually. Uh, this one actually has a metal cast uh, engine in it. It's kind of chrome plated, I believe, or at least polished. You know, Dodge Challenger. So that's cool. It's where you find a promotional one like that, especially a Johnny Lightning. This feels Johnny Lightning to me. And it is. In the Playing Mantis era. Opening hood. A nice engine in there. You have a lot of great parts. The other one's almost too nice to chop up. Uh, plastic wheels. Don't roll that well, though, but, you know, they're on the rubberish looking side. Not bad. Well, this is an interesting one. This is a Blackwell era Hot Wheels car that I don't think I ever had this one. And it's just rare because I had a bunch of them back in the day. That, that six wheel uh, Formula One car. It's not quite that. It's definitely stylized. Lickety six. You know, Larry took some liberties there. But still, very cool casting, kind of a more obscure one uh, from that era. So, nice to have one of those. Another Ertl looking thing. Is this like an ammonia tank, I think, or something? Yeah. Da, 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 da. And Hydrus Ammonia. Most assuredly an Ertl, and it is. You can actually hook multiple ones together on that one. And uh, a Cannonball Run a Ferrari Dino, although the actual car in the movie was a uh, 308, I believe. But still fun. There were uh, very few of the Ertl cars that were actually uh, matched to the car in the movie. I think the Rolls Royce and maybe the Porsche were the only ones that were actually matched. Very nice uh, Johnny Lightning Mach 5. Uh, I think they just recently brought this casting back out, and I almost bought it and didn't, and now I don't have to, because this one's in very nice shape. I like that this has the, um, the lights are clear under here, so it's the rare lens Johnny Lightning. And it comes with apparently part of a puzzle piece, um, but it's got this little, you know, back when they had uh, little, not memorabilia, but little nods to the uh, property that it was representing, like little clips from like the Blues Brothers or the Monkey Mobile or the General Lee. Uh, this is a Trans Am from Ertl. This one was probably a Bandit Trans Am, even though it was the Shovel Nose, so this would have been like a 76. Uh, but hey, the ones in the movie were actually 76s with the 77 front, so it's actually more accurate than it looks. So, pretty cool. And uh, not a lot of Shovel Noses out there, although Auto World has one now. It's nice. This is a casting that I really enjoy from Hot Wheels that it usually sells for a lot more than this because it's got an opening door on either side and it is a metal metal car. This is the London Taxi. Um, getting kind of harder to find, so this was a nice find. And, uh, you know, some really good stuff to be had over there. They've got, of course, much fancier stuff, too, and sometimes I'll... I'll treat myself to it, but like I said, I'm trying to keep things lean for the show coming up. Another uh, Johnny Lightning. Yep. It's street Freak. Uh, got the little 70 Super B with the little dual carb intake. There was a popular setup. There was a model kit that had that. I think everybody just kind of glommed onto it, and when they did a 70 Super B, we were like, we gotta do the dual carb thing. So, even though that would definitely not be fret factory. Pontiac GTO. I think this is Johnny Lightning. Yep. And uh, opening hood. Got a nice little triple carb set up under there. So, very nice. A 
And speaking of Johnny Lightning, cool Oldsmobile. Now these were, you know, quite significantly undersized. It's got an interesting thing here. I think this is just to keep it from getting, keep the wheels from getting smashed or something, but uh, weird guard thing on the bottom. But yeah, this is again, the bad old days of Johnny Lightning before they really stepped up their game, made things more true 164. This is, you know, easily like in the 170th scale, but you know, it's still a cool malaise car. So I'm going to grab it because love me some malaise era cars. This is not malaise era. But it is funky and it's got an opening doors. 63 Stingray. And this one's by Road Champs. So, not too many Road Champs in my collection, but uh, it's got some opening doors, it's got a detailed interior, good uh, candidate for a junkyard piece with the doors missing and then using the doors to uh, decorate some background scenes. Another Tamika that's way under 164 scale. This is the Dodge Coronet Custom 174th scale on this one. The front doors open, the back ones do not. It would have had a little light bar up here, but uh, that's okay. A lot of these were used and abused in the Dukes of Hazard TV show. And, uh, so I got a soft spot for these growing up watching that show. And uh, nice metal metal cars. Got a good weight to it. It's weighty, as my co-host Mark would say. And these are the cars from uh, Vintage Toy Universe, which is about 20 minutes from Vintage Toy King. They don't have as much diecasts. They've got much more action figure-y type stuff. But they do have a good selection of diecasts, and they did actually have some Lucy's. These ones, again, uh, were dollar cars or cheaper, so they do not reflect the quality of the product they normally sell. Uh, I want to say that up front, but they were going through these. They hadn't even put prices on them yet. And I was like, oh man, these are some real cool junkers. I got to get some of those. So, you know, right out of the gate, really trashed NASCAR, but it's got some fun pieces in there, fun interior, cool seat, some pieces. That would be a fun Gaslands car. Um, I forget the name of this one, but it's, uh, it was supposed to be uh, something Turismo. And it was supposed to be a DeLorean, and they lost the license, so Larry had to real quick change it up. <laughs> and um, so it is not a DeLorean, but, you know, busted out windshield. This thing is toast. But, you know, for me, it's fun, and it's a, it's a good candidate for a Gaslands build or something like that. It's even missing part of the A-pillar there. Uh, this one was actually in pretty decent shape. This is the 71 Firebird from Matchbox. Uh, Firebird Formula, which is not frequently what you get. You'd usually get a Trans Am, but it's got those cool snorkel uh, hood scoops on it, and uh, it's just a casting that I really dig from them. Uh, I've seen this one before. It's just a Z28 Camaro. Missing doors again. I think they gave this to me for like a quarter or something. <laughs> but, uh, you know, a good junkyard stack car. Um, got this one because... Uh, there was a Batmobile missing from my collection, and I've got uh, a small collection of tuned vehicles, and they, they tickled me, so I just, meh. And, um, another smashed up NASCAR, they just kind of threw this one in there, because, you know, it's not really useful to anybody, <laughs> but uh, it's still fun. Uh, anyway, and uh, this one is a, a car that I really like. This is a 67 Plymouth. It's in pretty rough shape. It's got the yellow glass. Um, but it's uh, it's intact, and I can do stuff with that. That's uh, a, a good candidate for a for a junker custom. And what else we got? We got two more in here. Uh, this one he just threw in. Yeah, you know, not really much usable there. I can use the engine, maybe. And this is one that I really like. This is a Kenner Fast one. That's a Z28 Camaro shooting brake with a crazy engine in the back. And, you know, the cool thing about these was they all had a unique license plate on it. They had different states, and there would have been a license plate here, and it would be like Colorado, and then it would have a unique serial number. So every car had its own license plate number that was unique to it. So this one's missing it, but uh, again, I don't really care. This car is intact. It looks like it had a family of bugs living inside of it. That's different. Not even sure how they got in there. Looks like a spider built a web in there and caught flies somehow. But, uh, 
I'm not going to ask too many questions about where that came from. So that's it, except for uh, my last car, the Behis de Resistance, which is this uh, Ecto-1 from the animated series. So I did pay five bucks for this one as opposed to the rest, which were all a dollar or less. And I'm um, just this Columbia Pictures Industry, all rights reserved, made in China on the bottom of it. You know, very basic. You know, the ultra cheap wheels on it this is not the uh, Hot Wheels version of the Ecto 1 from uh, the animated series, but it is mostly complete. This is a little wobbly, so I'm going to probably keep this in the bag, but it does say We're Back on them. There, so it's got kind of the 1A look to it. Uh, so actually, yeah, it says Ghostbusters 2 on there, so I should say Ghostbusters 2. Um, so that's interesting that it's the cartoon car, but it's set up like the Ghostbusters 2. So not an Ecto-1 that's in my collection, but you know me, I love Ghostbusters, and uh, I'm trying to get as many 164th-ish scale Ectos in my collection as possible, at least all the different variants. So uh, that's another one off my list. But yeah. Little uh, little haul, but some fun finds, and uh, just thought I'd share them with you. And if you're in the Ocala area, I highly recommend you check out Vintage Toy King and Vintage Toy Universe. They're both great stores run by great people, very friendly staff, and um, worth uh, supporting because they are small businesses doing the best they can with what they got in this our trying times. So... Uh, check them out. I'll link to their sites on the description below. And as always, I want to thank our patrons who support the show. If you want to join their ranks, you can visit diecastmedianetwork.com, buy our merch over there. Uh, helps support our, my brother, who's the designer of all of the cool logos and designs that uh, he's made for the show and uh, for the channel and for our various shows, I should say. You can check out some of the other videos that we have. If you like unboxings, we got a lot of those. I've got my builds. I've got Diecast Breakdown that I do with um, Mark and David, where we interview really cool uh, people in the Diecast community. And uh, we're just coming up with all sorts of great stuff. We're looking for contributors to the channel. If you want to uh, submit some stuff or learn how you could help the channel, you can shoot me an email at diecastmedianetwork at gmail.com. Or you can visit DieCastMediaNetwork.com and uh, support us on Patreon, hit the Join button, or just share these videos with your friends. That really helps a lot. We're trying to get to 10,000 subscribers in 2024 and parlay that into collecting 24,000 new cars to give to kids through DrivenDreams.org. You can check that out, and there's a link down in the show description. Um, really trying to make that happen because uh, one car equals one smile, and the kids that were trying to help all over the world could really use a smile and sometimes all it takes is a little car to brighten someone's day and uh again check out our other videos and uh as always i want to thank you for coming along with us for the ride so until next time stay fresh cheese bags